one of the high value uh, things in any business that we can use AI for and automation combined is to be able to take images that contain data somewhere, whether it's business cards, invoices, uh, documents, um, signs, uh, and to be able to automatically extract structured data out and then through our automation, put it somewhere interesting, start a process, uh, uh, generally run our business, um, full old data that we've never been able to use before uh, for new uses. Uh, the Napoleon uh, biography that came out a few years ago, five, six years ago, uh, only came into existence because the French National uh, Museum was able to uh, process OCR 30,000 of Napoleon's letters. Whole new Trevor Trove of, of you know, primary information that was able to be used. New biographies came out, new things were learned uh, from the way he spoke, etc. Your business, treasure trove of raw data that is uh, lost at the moment in invoices, documents, etc. And OCR, uh, it's not new, but certainly the AI models that we have today are so exceptional at pulling data out into structured form that uh, you would be crazy to not experiment with it and then roll it out in production. Uh, here we have an example uh, with just some arbitrary business card, um, a small amount of, of automation. Um, I'm using make.com, um, but it's going into the uh, OpenAI's latest um, multimodal model called uh, 4.0, uh, GPT 4.0. And, uh, and so by the time you're watching this, there may be a newer, better version, which is fantastic. You should use that. And then a little bit of wiring with Make. And I'll show you two different examples of, of that wiring. Let me just make this bigger. So this is a simple one where the image is coming out of a Google Drive. Uh, let me just run that for you again. So the image gets pulled in from Google Drive. We send it off to uh, the GPT-4.0 model, whichever one is the newest, best for you. Uh, we could also try the mini model. Um, let's just have a quick look at that now. See that we give it a bit of a prompt saying what sort of structure output uh, I would prefer. Um, and a source for the file. With make it's really simple to reference a file object from a previous step um, and which model. For laughs and giggles, let's try the new mini model. Let's see if that is, is as effective. It's always handy to know if there's a faster, smaller model, cheaper model that you can use instead. Have a look, and that looks pretty good as well. So that's handy, we could, we could use that model. Uh, the other uh, example is, uh, and this one came from, uh, we have a, a, an, a, sort of a, a make.com Discord channel uh, where people have chats about problems. And this one came up, how could we have a uh, images coming into Telegram? Huge fan, I'm a huge fan of using Telegram, as you've seen in previous videos. Uh, could I upload photos into Telegram? And can we then convert those again using GP4.0 and get that structured data out? So everything about this is the same as the other version with the exception of we're listening to a Discord group, Discord, uh, sorry, a, uh, a Telegram channel, a Telegram group, a Telegram personal discussion with the uh, the bot, and then we'd send back the uh, the structured data. So if we just focus on uh, rebuilding this, you'll see um, that it works. But this is really valuable to your business. If you want to see more, watch the rest of the video, uh, play along at home, and just get a feel for just how simple it is to set this stuff up and uh, to imagine what you could do with it. Let us build this from scratch. Now I'm going to reuse the idea of the Google Drive, but of course you can use OneDrive, uh, Telegram, any source of, of image objects uh, or whatever the source is that you wish to use. Um, go there, we'll go download. Um, we could, I'm going to download a specific file, but uh, I tell you what, that's what we did in, in the last one. So let's, let's uh, watch for files in a folder. And this way, if there were ever new files, it would find them and process them, which is perfectly fine for our a pretty handy use case. I'll find a folder. And so this would be a folder where any new, in, as, as fast as images get getting processed from the real world, you're walking around taking photos with your phone, upload, visit this folder, and then uh, on a regular basis, this scenario would run, process the data, pull it out, store it, 
uh, in a CRM, in a database, wherever it is you wish. Um, one's fine for us. Let's just go from now on. Rename images from the archive. Images laying around the office. Let's run that. It should find that first one. It doesn't. Let's choose where to start. Choose manually. There's that card, and we can. So there's the uh, there's the file object, and we, we don't need most of this. What we're looking for is uh, the data objects. Okay, so now we can send that straight on to uh, a multi a multimodal uh, large language model, which uh, at the moment we'll give uh, the OpenAI one. Go uh, analyze images. So. Um, when, when someone was asking about this in the, in the uh, Discord group, they were asking the question, well, how do I use the AI, OpenAI Assistance API to do this job? They thought they were going to need to create an assistant to attach each file um, to the processor. Not true at all, not necessary. It's just like a chat, but we're going to upload a file to the chat model um, and do a one shot, just give me the answer and move on. We don't need to create an assistant. So let's... Uh, Pass in the image. We're going to pass it in. We can pass it in from a URL. So if you've got your images coming from somewhere where there's a URL, that's great. Make sure it's the actual URL and doesn't redirect. So if you are uh, certain sites that, that might actually redirect, you want the raw image. But we're going to pick the file because um, oh, I made a mistake. I was wondering where my file object was. We now, so yeah, we now want to. Add a module to download that file. Yes. Manually, there's the file ID. Okay. Sorry for anyone watching and was watching you make that mistake. Download file. And so if we find multiple files here, you know, then this will run multiple times and everything downstream will run multiple for each of the files. Download the file back into here, add image, file URL, and now we automatically find that file from earlier on in the, uh, in the scenario. Excellent. Now, as for the model, as we looked before, we have a couple of options. In currently, at the time of recording, we want the 4.0 models. They're the multimodal models that can do video and audio um, and, so, and, and images, so we want those ones. Uh, and uh, the max tokens is sort of describing a limit of how big the JSON structure might be that we want, or it doesn't have to be JSON, it could be anything. Uh, we could just start with please extract. Uh, we could tell it what type of information to look for, Business card information. We won't tell it about any structure, but let's find out what it does. Save and we call this OCR to sort of give it an idea. Huge component of renaming these things. If you've ever looked at anyone else's make scenario where it's just generic name, generic name, generic name, it's like, I don't know what you're supposed to be doing. So let's start that again. We'll choose our business card. Let's see. That's now downloading the file. It's now uploading it to the OpenAI API. See what we get. Result is here. So here we get the, uh, here's the information extracted, business name, et cetera, et cetera, which is fantastic. It's done its job. Now, can we coax it into giving it to us in a structured format? Because we know that in make.com, we would like it in JSON because then we can turn that into a bundle and bundle we can send it off to wherever we wish to send it. So let's see if we can get it to uh, give it to JSON. Like JSON response only. With keys, full name. Uh, what else do we want? Full name, phone, email, Ooh. URL, and um, 
good. Let's see if that's all it needs. Oops, not going to do anything because there's no new files. Let's tell it that we want to use the old file. Very much like the button. See what we get now. And look, it, uh, even with just telling it what keys, it seems to work, and time will tell whether that is sufficient. But this is the whole response. And I'll be honest, sometimes it's really hard to fully convince these models to stop putting additional things around it. Um, and uh, if you've got any tips on how to tell OpenAI or any of the other loud language models to cut that out, just give me the JSON. Um, now, uh, there are, of course, other options. Um, you could use uh, structured. You could tell it I want it in structured. Um, see if it's under advanced. Uh, what I mean, I'm, uh, what's missing here? What's missing here is there is no response format option. So whoever has written this module has not included a response format where we could have said we want it to be a JSON response and then it would have coaxed it into JSON. That's unfortunate. I would prefer that. That would have been a good start. Um, instead, what I found, and there, there are different approaches to this. Uh, I'm a fan of just uh, pulling it out with, um, with a regex. But what we're looking for essentially is to say, hey, let's start, find me the first, first quote here and find me the last quote and everything in the middle. And, and that's what I want. We're going to use regular expressions. Uh, so firstly, the source of the text will be from our result. So we can see we want to get rid of, I think I think of two ways. Are we getting rid of this bit or are we keeping this bit? And I wish to approach this with a perspective of what we're going to keep. Now, as it says, we want a name group. So we'll give it a name, Jason. Um, and what do we want? So that then in here is how we describe in regular expression language, which is not a language known to humans, um, but uh, we'll give it a go. We wish to keep first quote, uh, everything in the middle, and then the last curly bracket. And I put little escape characters there for, uh, because curly bracket is also a regular expression symbol. So now it should capture everything from the first curly bracket. Then the dot means any character, star means any number of, of of, of those, the uh, uh, and then the curly bracket at the end means, and that's the last character. So that's all we're looking for. Uh, right, all matches? No, we just want one match. Face incentive? Yes. Multi line? I think we want both of those. Press Doki. Rename that extract JSON and string. And let's see if we can give this a bit of a that in the board run this only okay, there and it looks to have done a reasonable job good since we're now going to get json let's turn that into a json module over let's pass that json so we can actually use it uh, there this will name And of course, here we could then store it in Flickr. Uh, so someone's given us their business card, so maybe you want to create a record. Click up, or you'll see a record. Let us choose where to start. Choose where to start. And we now have a beautiful bundle containing an information sound really easily. Um, if we had, let's just see if I have table asked. Let's see what I've got. No, I don't have anything ready to go. That's okay. But you can imagine now putting that into the um, 
That's excellent. And that, that's all there is. Now, the last thing I wish to show is about Telegram specifically. Uh, a couple of little novelties uh, to be wary of. Um, let us just have a look at what I have to do differently for Telegram. I didn't have to do anything. Okay, we're good to go. I apologize. Um, maybe it was for another model. Might have been for Llama 3. Or might have been Grok. There was a new Grok. Uh, if, if you were using uh, Grok here uh, to bring in an image or an audio file. It's, I'm sorry. That is for a, a future video. There is an exciting new, just a, a quick, quick show for you. There is a new verified free Grok model that's coming uh, that we've worked on. We've got it verified uh, and that will be in the video coming very, very soon. But uh, also subscribe to transcription and translation. That was what I was thinking of when I was taking the detour there. But this just works exactly like, so our Telegram example works just like uh, the other one. You watch the messages, you uh, download it, and you upload it to OpenAI. And the same trick there. Let's make sure that we will JSON string, convert it into a bundle, use it for something. In this case, we were sending it back. Short and sharp, really appreciate uh, your interest. I think there's a lot to, uh, to like about this. This is true business value getting from large language models, uh, extracting structured text from whether it's images, videos, audio files, um, and then using make automation to then take that and put that in somewhere interesting and start new automations. Uh, if you use this for anything useful, drop a mention in the, uh, the comments. Uh, super appreciate you giving this thumbs up. Subscribe, we've got a lot more videos coming. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.